Hey guys, Brian here. I'd like to show you around my workshop just a minute before I jump into my little jewel here, my little XR75 that I refurbished a couple of years ago. You can see we've got just a few bikes in here. This 2001 YZ125 belongs to Mike. This is my 1999 YZ250. It's not really been ridden a lot in the last 20 years or so, but I try to keep it in pretty good shape. I hope to get back on it more this year. And this is my 1976 XR75. I used to race these things when I was a kid. My first race was on an XR75 back in 1974 and won my first trophy on it. Still have this trophy, fifth place in 1974. But this bike had a lot more problems on it than you could ever imagine. Uh, when I brought it home, it was a pure junker. The original forks were pretty worn out. They had big worn spots on both the tubes, and they were pretty useless, honestly. I looked at the bike, and I couldn't really decide what to do with it. You know, should I try to put it back original, or should I just do a resto mod? You know, I really liked and always wanted a, a Jeff Ward Mini Elsinore back in the day. Those were the CR125s that were chopped down and made into uh, 100cc mini bikes. Uh, this certainly isn't a mini Elsinore, but I really like the looks of them. So they were just they were just so trick. The front end suspension had shortened CR125 forks. Uh, they they typically had the CR125 fender on them that was cut down on both ends, and uh, also had the the CR125 side plates on it, and that's what I did to mine to give it that look. So I found some some 1975 CR125 forks, got them off of eBay. Uh, I shortened the forks without any machining. I'll show you a picture of how I did it. I'll pop that up on the screen. All I had to do to shorten the forks was to put this little piece of PVC tubing behind the top out spring in the damper tube. I also shortened the fork spring just a little bit to avoid excessive preload when it all went back together. It does change the spring rate just slightly, but I mean for what I'm doing here it really makes no difference at all. And if anything it just makes it a little stiffer you know, for my fat butt when I get on it. It's just set up for riding and looking at more than anything. So I just wanted the, the height to be correct. I've also got a set of CR80 triple clamps. I wanted to use these so that I could slide the tubes up into the clamps just slightly just to help with the length without making the, the travel even shorter. I also had to create a new stop. You can see here where that's welded rather than use the, the stop so the front fender came from DC Plastics and it was shortened on both ends. The mud flap came from Vintage Iron. They had them with both the CR logo and without the CR logo. And of course I took the one without the CR logo. It would be cool to have one with XR logo, but I'm not sure they ever made those. On the front I've got a 17 inch DID period correct rim. I had that, that laced up to, to the original hub using spokes from Pro Wheel Racing. If you look at the rim, it looks gold anodized, but it's not. I'm using a Duplicolor anodized look paint. It really looked, did really good, I believe. You know, I've gotten it muddy, ridden it a bit, got the tire on it, and still really no scratches that are really noticeable. I've also got a CR125 front hub, new cables, of course new handlebars and new controls. I used the original Honda controls. Actually made this this cool DG crossbar pad. You can see it's even got retro snaps on the back. Kind of like the old days. My daughter actually sewed it up for me. I made a stencil for the DG logo and painted it on the vinyl. So you might ask what the heck's with this color scheme. Just back in the day this looked very retro, black gold, a lot of things were black gold. Also the frame is the same color or, or tries to emulate the same as the DG frames were back in the day. 
So rather than send the frame out to be cadmium gold plated, which I actually called around a few places to see if they'd do it and nobody would touch it, but I did uh, just paint it instead. So I've got some ideas for some new mods for this thing. Stick around to the end and I'll show you some things I already have, uh, but just haven't dug into yet. If you notice, it looks like there's all new hardware all over this bike. Actually, it's not. It was, uh, most of this hardware is original hardware that I had replated. And, and it came with a Louisville Slugger baseball bat as a megaphone. You can see in this picture it was pretty rough. There was really nothing connecting the baseball bat to the header pipe. It was just pushed on there. Same in the front. It was leaking in the front without any seal on it. You can see all the blow bite on the head. I found a DG replica pipe. I've actually got it packed pretty tight with packing to try to get it as quiet as possible. It came with no packing in it or very little at all, but uh, it sounds pretty good. This pipe's not really period correct. We didn't have many plated pipes on bikes back in the day. Uh, I really would have rather had a black pipe, but saw this, it looks pretty cool though. I try to get in here where you can see these rear shocks. These are Hagen brand shocks from the UK, but they were imported to the US. This is the company that bought the Girling brand, apparently. So I guess you could say it's a new period correct shock. You really can't see behind the plates, but I've got a picture of it. You can see in the picture it's very similar to the turtle suspension. I did this exactly the way my dad did the lay down shocks on my old YZ80B. It gives it a little more travel, but definitely gave it the racing look that I was looking for. The rear wheel was another period correct DID rim. It came off of a CR80. It's got the same color process that I use on the front with the duplicolor paint. Also have spokes from Pro Wheel Racing on the rear also. Believe it or not, this rear fender is the original rear fender. I salvaged it. It had some dings and dents and deep scratches in it, but I cleaned it up pretty good, I believe, and painted it with this Krylon, Krylon Fusion plastic paint. And you know what? I think it looks pretty good especially compared to what it looked like before. The gas tank looked pretty good at first. Looking from the pictures, you can see that they, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it didn't look like it was, it was completely wrecked, but it was dinged up pretty bad. It had a lot of Bondo on it, and I tried to straighten it out the best I could. I used to still use a little bit of Bondo. Got it to look pretty smooth. You can see in these final pictures, uh, it does look pretty good. I think. And I did all the painting with the rattle can. Uh, I, I, used a, I used a good two-part Spraymax brand clear coat on it. You can look below. I've got a link to that. If you're ever painting, it's really good stuff. Just uh, be sure to use a respirator. The piston that came out of this thing was pretty toasted. You can see. I mean, it'd probably still run, but so to redo the top end, I put a 102cc 56mm bore piston and sleeve in it. This piston is, comes out of a 140cc Chinese horizontal engine, which actually has the same pin size, very close pin to dome distance as the original XR. And I had a sleeve put in it by Terry at Firepower Minis. I'm not sure if he's still in business, but he's still on Facebook. If any of you guys have long travel suspension on your XRs, you know the kickstand's a problem. So I extended this kickstand about three inches or so. You can see in these pictures of the process how I did it. I found another similar kickstand with the same shaft diameter, cut a section out of the second stand, and made a cut in the center of the old stand. I then used a piece of threaded rod and made it a slight press fit connecting all the pieces together and had it welded. I ground everything off smooth and now it looks really sweet. So here's some of my fun stuff I was going to I said I'd show you at the end. You can see in here hidden away I've got a Lockhart oil cooler. That's really going to be cool on this bike.
I think I've got all the stuff I need here to do this. I've got an extra cam and tower. I plan to get the, the, the cam modified with a roller and maybe update the cam. Whenever I get a bigger carb, I've got a manifold. It's not drilled, so it's really universal so that I can adapt it uh, to whatever carb I can find. And in this box, hmm, what's in there? So this oily mess here is a five-speed transmission for this engine. I'm not sure what that's going to do to the ratios, but it's definitely going to be cool. Hey guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. In the description below, there are links to items that I may have used in the video. If you purchase with the links below, then a small amount will go towards my channel. Have fun and be safe.